Hi everyone, this is Megan Van Petten. And this is Lindsay Poss. You're listening to the Esports Next podcast. Here, we will highlight the fantastic guests and speakers of the Esports Next conference. Esports Next 2022 is presented by Morgan Stanley and is located in Sweet Home, Chicago. Don't forget to register to secure your spot at the conference and enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Esports Next podcast, the official podcast of the Esports Next conference. I'm Megan Van Petten, and I'm joined by my friend and co-host, Lindsay the Boss Poss. Today is exciting because we have another two guest episode. This is our, our second two guest episode, so we are really deep in the twos today. I'm so excited to welcome Johnny Kutnowski, who is VP of Product, and Alexis Prusis, who is VP of Marketing. Johnny and Alexis are joining us from Blinkfire Analytics, so we're definitely going to talk about data and trends and all of that good stuff. Both of you, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, can you just to start off, tell us a little bit about yourselves, give us a short intro of how you got into esports and what you currently do? Okay, um, I'll take this in. Um, so... I'm Johnny, VP of product at uh, Blinkfire. We, um, when we started, we, we started in traditional sports. We do analytics on a ROI analysis for um, for sponsorships and um, in, in real time. And traditional sports, were, well, I mean, the revenue is big and and the numbers are, are are always really big. Sports, of course, is is one of the is the top form of entertainment, um, but when as a tech company we work in the technology technological space digital space we deliver you know real-time data um so you know sometimes presenting these ideas to traditional sports has been uh has caused not friction but required some explanation to to explain why you need data in real time why aren't yearly reports not cutting it anymore um so sometimes these conversations would would take a long time and then um personally i've been uh, i've never been a, a big uh, sports guy myself uh, nor watching nor, nor practicing uh however video games and esports are kind of my go-to thing and they're just filling the time for me uh so i just was having a conversation about um how our data could be interpreted with some friends who, who do work in esports and that conversation took three minutes like it for them to understand exactly the value that they could be getting out of it took three minutes as opposed to sometimes a 45 you know an hour long call um so that then something kind of clicked and i said well wait we should I know we're doing like sports, but esports is it's like it's kind of there. It's ninety five there, ninety five percent there, right? So um, we started. Uh, I, I slowly started, you know, bringing it in the to the the company, so, saying I think this is a is a powerful opportunity. Back in the day, I'm, I'm saying like six years ago. And, and this this actually puts into perspective how things are evolving very very quickly. But six years ago, the you know the deal size, the revenue p potential from esports was still pretty slim and and um, not as significant that it is now as as it is now because now it's a fully you know fully fledged vertical within the company. Um, it's something that we have you know dedicated people, a dedicated department just for this. Whereas we don't have for anything else. So it's, right now it's you know sports and esports. Um, we have you know specific products developed for esports. We have a lot of resources specifically des designed just for this because we do see this as the future of entertainment uh, or present and future of entertainment, I guess. Um, and um, one of the most, not only growing industry, but also the, what, some of the smartest customers that we have are from this space where they are, know how to, you know, put pride aside and continuously learn from the, the results, continuously learn from the industry. Um, and it's really, really inspiring for us as well because we get to work with all these organizations very, very closely. We, we develop really, um, really deep relationships with them and they themselves cooperate among themselves. Uh, really, really uh, 
passionately. So they're helping each other grow the industry because they will, you know, they they know that it's a, still a growing industry and they need to to empower it and not be selfish and you know harbor secrets mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So it's really really interesting to be that kind of um, third person in the uh, in the conversation you know, in, in, at the table. Um, the brands as well, like the brands uh, in esports are also very very passionate. Um, even the ones that you know are more natural to to esports or or more new coming. I know I'm, I'm rambling on and on, but as you can see, it's it's definitely something that I'm I'm very passionate about, and we we have been investing a lot of resources into this because it is something that not only is it a really you know interesting path for us to pursue, but in very recent times the conclusions that we've we've drawn from our esports ventures the conclusions the, the features that we've been developing from our esports um partnerships have actually looped back and and fed uh, the traditional sports side and many of these traditional sports are now going into esports or are actually learning a few tricks from esports and applying them to, to traditional sports and you know we're just in the middle of all of it and it, it's really really fun um to be able to share those insights and help the industry grow at the same time for, for any of you who may not be watching the video and uh, are doubting Johnny's commitment. He is also sitting in a super sick gaming chair. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure everyone listening also knew that uh, Alexis would love to hear about you. <laughs> That's important. That is super important, Poss, that we let the 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 listeners know. Um, and he's also s- sitting next to uh, Alexis Prusis, who is um, uh, our Ch- our very own Chicago. Uh, research committee um, volunteer and their members. Um, it's so exciting to hear from both of you today because, you know, just me uh, even being at the Esports Trade Association and people call me and say, Megan, what would be a good investment? We want to enter the space. And and fulfilling people's, you know, expertise, uh, um, expectations and gaining their trust and, and going on this journey with them, I mean, I'm really hearing that passion from Blinkfire and you're all you guys. And that is that just fires me up. I'm so excited to learn more about what you guys are bringing to Esports Next Conference. But uh, Alexis, l- let us know what you've got in your back pocket. Yeah. So I've been at Blinkfire almost five years now uh, and head up our marketing, but I've also had the privilege of working with our amazing customer list. And when I first started more on the traditional sports side, uh, you know, Johnny and quite a few of my coworkers were very into esports. And so throughout the years, I have like, I've learned more, you know, I've been more infiltrated in the esports world in terms of the content that's being produced, the competitions, the sponsorships, how things have evolved. And it's been fascinating to watch from, you know, 2017, 2018 to current times where you're now seeing traditional sports want to copy what esports are doing in terms of their influencers that they have on their teams, in terms of sponsorships, in terms of content. And being on the, the research and data committee at ESTA has been amazing because I'm on a committee with people from amazing organizations like, you know, YouGov and Stream Hatchet, and we all share ideas and trends we're seeing. And then in terms of coming on board at the STA conference this month, you know, I attended last year and I'm so honored and grateful to be on the Impactful Trends uh, panel where we're going to be talking about anything and everything we're seeing in the industry from, like I mentioned, content, sponsorship trends, audience trends. Uh, so it's, I'm really excited about the panel. And I think that, you know, the audience and whoever's listening in is going to find some great uh, bits of information to share. I love that. Can you tell me a little bit more about who you're on the panel with, um, why you think this is kind of a good panel to be on, and maybe what else you might be excited about with attending Esports Next 2022? I know Alexis is the one who's kind of going as the representative of Blinkfire and 
Johnny unfortunately lives in Spain, <laughs> so well, bit of a farter. Fortunate for me. I mean, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> unfortunate for the attendance of this conference, but otherwise yeah. very fortunate. Um, but yeah, Alexis would love to hear more about about the panel, about why you're attending, and about what you're excited about. Yeah, so the conference being in our backyard, you know, Chicago. Uh, so we're attending. I have another coworker who's coming in from Minnesota who's focused solely on esports. Um, he actually worked for one of, he worked for a few of our customers. So version one and the esports award. So he will be visiting as well and attending. So I'm excited to have him along with me. And then in terms of the panel, you know, Roger Payne from YouGov, coincidentally, he worked with him when he was at the marketing arm. They use Blinkfire, so I have a relationship with him. And then Alex Kerr, who's now Trajectory, who's leading the panel, um, I have known him for years as well. So it's great to see familiar faces you know, on the panel that I'll be talking to and we'll be sharing different insights. But I think overall, you know, it'll be nice to see familiar faces in the esports world as well as network and meet other individuals and I think Blinkfire is coming in from a year ago when we attended to now. We have so many more features and products that cater to the esports industry. So I'm excited, you know, to talk more about what we have to offer and how we really are becoming a game changer in the space. You sure are. And that that is so exciting. There, there's nothing more important than fulfilling sponsorship. I can't go on about that, you know, and, and having people in, enjoy their exper experience and have everyone win. And that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a lot of new trends um, from Blink Fire. And that's another show. <laughs> I would love to have I would love to have you on Esports Connected. Um, it, you too, Johnny, all the way from Spain. Yes, yes. Um, you know, and one of the things that we did um, with Esports e Trade Association is we created a library of um, curated research just because things are so fast. It's so hard to keep up. I feel like we could do a webinar every month just on what's happening. But, you know, you guys really do make an, an incredible contribution to our newsletter. Alexis, you have been so imperative to our growth and so consistent. And it's, and it's so great to have you here in Chicago and being at the World Business Chicago. Yes. You know, a few weeks ago and really, you know, leading, leading the force here. We, uh, we, we are so grateful. Yeah. Thank you. And we feel the same way. You know, it's great being, uh, in an organization and on the board again, sharing ideas and just being in the conversation with esports as it's evolved, you know, for the last two years that I've been, uh, and Blinkfire has been associated with ESTA. So that leads really well into kind of this this next question that I want to ask, and given that you're both in analytics, that you're both heavily involved in the industry, what have been some of the bigger trends you've seen and what, if anything, has surprised you about them? Um, so having, having worked closely with, you know, a lot of these organizations, there's a, I guess there, there are several uh, insights that we can, we can discuss, but one of them is more, you know, quantitative, and the other one is more qualitative. So it's 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 interesting, right? So, um, first off, it's it's amazing the the way like it's video. You know how everyone says video is the new type of content, right? Or well, it's maybe they've been saying it a couple of years ago, and now it's already like a well, an obvious kind of thing. Instagram is trying to convince us of by shoving reels on the newsfeed. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Aside from, you know, showing you suggested posts and changing the algorithm mm -hmm. constantly. Uh, but that's exactly right. And, and the, it's, a, it's further proof that video is king. Um, more and more uh, is the scale tipping over like the proportion of videos um, that are posted, uh, or, you know, versus images on platforms like Instagram. Um, Platforms that offer like text-based uh, content, such as you know uh, Facebook or Twitter. I mean, Facebook isn't relevant in esports, I guess, in the Western world anyway. But um, Twitter, you know, 
just posting text only tweets and is like also in a decline and but mostly what I, what I want to talk about is is really video the amount of production and the amount of work that goes into all of these is trailblazing like the way the way the the way it's being done by um by some of these esports organizations is I guess another buzzword is trend setting, but it's really they are shaping the path and what, you know, huge sports organizations from all over the world, huge, you know, influencers are now ad adopting. Video is becoming the, I mean, video already is, but it's it's distancing itself even further um, from, you know, the other types of content um, to such great i mean such, such results that it's really really interesting and it's making it re really good for the industry as well like the side effects of these types of things are really interesting more video editors are hired more you know uh, vfx people are hired people are actually now getting to work in the industry that they're passionate about even if they have a more you know kind of an ancillary connection to it and not necessarily our athletes or or you know gamers or or, or uh, org owners right because Five years ago, you're either a player or you own a, an or, a organization or you have a brand. That's the only way you can be like in esports. Uh, but now many, totally. many new roles are being discovered. Yeah. Like fun content. Yeah. Literally, like artists be able to express and create and um, share. And, and, and it, 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 that's, Lindsay, if we have time for another question, I would love to ask you both. Who do you look for when you want inspiration? Because you guys have to be on the cutting edge. You've got to be leading. No pressure. But um, <laughs> what what <laughs> what does inspire you? Well, that's actually a great question for Alexis because she leads our like you know weekly newsletters for like, things to actually be on the lookout for. Which if you're not signed up to, you should be. Um, Thank you. But uh, I will be. <laughs> Alexis, that's a plug, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I know. Thank you. <laughs> I wasn't going to do it, but thanks, Johnny. <laughs> it's what I do. Um, no, so I'll, I'll let Alexis answer, but just to, re to you know, finalize the point um, before on, on the video stuff, the reason I bring it up uh, is about the, the tremendous amount of content that is being pushed, but not only, you know, because we're not talking about, like, 30 second clips on Twitter only or you know a minute TikTok video which of course are, are there and there are a lot of them but um, it's the hours upon hours of streams that are you know being generated and um, for us the fact that we're tracking every single second and every minute of it um, of everything you know that is out there gives us so much insights about the you know the trends of usage the games that are suddenly spiking um, mm -hmm. what not only games that are spiking in playtime but also in hours watched right which is like one of the most uh, sought after uh, kind of metrics in in the the analytics space right now so being able to say oh there's suddenly a huge spike of whatever fall guys is making a comeback now in, in europe for some reason um yeah, and it, it's play. well Ooh. i mean that that of <laughs> course makes it uh, obvious i guess but it's it's really interesting to see all these trends and uh, and how it's evolving for us being you know at the at uh, viewing the dashboard from up above with like all the data that we're collecting video again is just proving to be the de facto kind of content people mm -hmm. are yeah. Switching off their TVs, turning on to to Twitch, on-demand content, uh, sorry, live content and on-demand content co constantly. So that's like more the quantitative metric that, that like trend that I'm seeing. It's all video now, and if you're not processing processing all of it and you know getting results and insights about it the same day to make you know decisions for tomorrow, you're already late. Like you're you already lost the game. Um, and then um, aside. From from that is how I'm seeing uh, the consolidated kind of, um, you know, teams used to have a lot of sponsors and esports is still very, very much reliant on sponsorship money. It's, it's still like the main source of revenue for most of these organizations. Um, and now they would have, you know, an official 
beverage, official energy drink, official stuff like that. And they would have 14, 15, 20, uh, you know, permanent brands that are on their jersey, you know, fighting. They would look like NASCAR cars, essentially, uh, with logos plastered everywhere. And now people are focusing on quality content. Now people are, you know, trimming down the mm-hmm. amount of sponsors that they're uh, going after, creating more meaningful partnerships, creating campaigns that are everlasting, um, actually, you know, uh, linking up uh, the brand values like oh what are you actually after what is your brand really interested in and let's let's see if we connect in, in that aspect let's develop something about that um, and we've actually based on all, the, all that activity based on all that you know the shift of of um, of strategy by these organizations. We've actually built tools to to measure these kind of you know new ways of doing things, uh, like our inventory management tool, uh, specifically the campaign tracking um, feature within this uh, suite of tools is is really really eye opening in, in that regard. Um, we've been seeing a lot of that. Um, these con- it's I, I don't know it, I, I'm a numbers guy it, it, it's really seeing the constant benchmarking and being able to say oh if we post this image like this we're gonna get 40 percent more engagement based on past performance um, and it feels like you're playing with cheat codes essentially because you you're, you're able to to make to forecast what's gonna happen um, and nine out of ten times it really is a uh, the game changer um so those will be my two trends to really highlight um the the video portion of things and how everything is video this is video we're doing a podcast on video people are gonna consume it everywhere right um and then the the more the consolidation of the sponsor roster becoming a more meaningful larger if you will also but um more meaningful and, and deeper partnerships, more about providing value than just, you know, slapping logos and saying, oh, we did this for you. Uh, we'll, I'll see you next time. That's and so I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's, like, you know, it's about you, time. You've given us so much to chew on. Um, we're going to yeah. we're gonna wrap up for now. So much to think about. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, wow. I know you've already mentioned Alexis's newsletter, but where else, what else should people be signed up for? Where should they contact you if they want to ask you questions about analytics? Can you just plug everything you want to plug? <laughs> uh, yeah, so we, uh, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, Blinkfire Analytics as well as uh, our website, blinkfire.com. And that's where you can subscribe to our weekly newsletter that'll hit your inbox on Fridays, all about trends we're seeing, recaps of the sports and esports news from the last week, uh, any little tidbits of insights that we kind of unlock from our platform weekly. So it's a great place to stay in the loop of what's happening in the sports sponsorship and social media world. Just to tack onto that, we recently released Blinkfire.gg as well as part of our efforts for you know for esports. Um, I'm proud of the team that did that, so it's it's really mm-hmm. it really looks cool. So you should pay it a visit. So cool. Well, for everyone out there that wants to learn more about analytics in the space, Blinkfire is definitely the place to do so. And if you would like to register to attend Esports Next or learn more, please visit esportsta.org. Johnny and Alexis, thank you so much for joining us, and we will see the audience next episode.